Okay, so next I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Paul Langley. He's currently the director of the Mayo Clinic in Arizona Proteomics Laboratory and is assistant professor in the biochemistry and molecular biology department within the Mayo College of Medicine. Uh, Paul's research uh, focuses on discovering and characterizing signal mechanisms with insulin action. He received his PhD in the University of Texas Health Sciences Center at San Antonio in 2005. And his talk is From the Dark to the Light, How Progenesis Added Years to His Life. I uh, responded quickly, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll, no problem. And then I quickly ran away from the computer, and then I think four weeks later or something, they asked me politely if I would send them a title for the talk. I said, no problem, then I quickly ran away from the computer again, and then I basically had no time, and I quickly rattled off the title, and then two months later, Mark sends us the information, okay, guys, so we're getting ready to do it, and I saw the title of my talk, and I absolutely cringed. I saw their titles, and their titles were awesome. But uh, what, what it was is, uh, the reason we, I went with that um, is because this, this, uh, this program helped trans transition me from uh, a generation of mass spectrometers to the next generation. And so when I was uh, finishing at um, ASU, I had worked uh, for years on an FT. ICR, a thermo machine. It was a huge machine, and we, uh, we flew blindly. We didn't have a lot of what we have now. And so um, when I got to Mayo in uh, whatever, 2012, 2013, uh, they handed me the Elite. So I was able to work on uh, a, a generation, uh, th probably three generations advanced from the FT. And so we turned it on, and, it, and I couldn't believe the difference alone, but it was still kind of, I was kind of blind as to uh, what, you know, what to do as, as far as, you know, parameters, um, the LC, everything. And so that's when I met Mark through a suggestion from a friend here in San Antonio. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about how progenesis opened up a whole new world for me as far as how to look at just your raw data alone without even getting to data analysis, which is another completely uh, amazing advantage uh, for, uh, for those of us who are in the field of uh, label-free quantitative proteomics. So um, my workflow is really simple. I'm uh, very much a... Uh, lowest amount of effort possible kind of person. I find that the most simple approach in mass spectrometry has yielded me the most consistent amount of data. And so um, I just simply go through triptych digestion of whatever samples I end up in my hand with uh, mostly uh, pro all protein. And then it's simple. We just throw it in progenesis. Um, and then I take my exported data from progenesis, I put it into mascot, I take mascot's data and I put it back into progenesis. And that's how I do quantitative proteomics with progenesis. Uh, it's extremely user friendly for those of us who don't like to do much except get data. Um, I am a gel CMS, uh, like, I like it the best. I've had the best luck with it. Um, it's very uh, straightforward. Uh, basically, uh, you'll have uh, samples. I'll throw it in the gel. If you give me lysates, we'll do 10 to 50 micrograms. We'll, do, uh, we'll use gel slices as uh, our fractionation approach. Trypt triptych digest. Uh, we go then throw it through the machine and, and pump it out through uh, progenesis. This is also uh, compatible with in-solution digest as well. Um, this has been really good for us uh, to help people save money because a lot of people don't like to pay to have the gel because each slice is a certain price. And so what we want to 
We want to minimize costs, so, so okay, we'll do it in Solution Digest if your, solu if your sample is compatible, which uh, we've had good luck with uh, uh, cellular fractionation. And so these are some of the projects that uh, we have had excellent um, results with, with regards to people approaching me with what to do. And so um, I cut my teeth in, uh, in insulin action uh, with uh, Larry Mandarino, and Larry is obsessed with human muscle. And so human muscle is absolutely uh, very difficult to work with uh, as far as uh, proteomics because of the large amount of contractile proteins and uh, titan. And so when I worked on an in-solution digest of muscle, I got like, you know, 1,200 proteins and literally the majority of it was titan because it's so huge. And then the second and third players were, of course, myosin. So we went to a uh, gel CMS-based fractionation approach. And we typically get, uh, for a human muscle, we'll get about 3,000 proteins, and with progenesis, we can quantify probably around 2,000 at a time. Uh, we've had several really cool uh, projects that way, and definitely the most recent one was a buddy of mine, Don Coletta. She comes to me with human muscle biopsies pre and post bariatric surgery. And so we were able to take uh, four subjects, I think it ended up being 64 fractions total, and put it through progenesis. And the, the journal Diabetes liked it a lot, so they published it as a brief report very quickly. And um, the data was really neat. And so additionally to that, we've also worked on uh, fat as well. That was, we quantified 3,000 proteins at a time in fat. Cells are a total different story. Uh, that's a fantasy land compared to the, to the tissues. We've gotten up to 5,000 proteins, and progenesis rips right through it. The only problem is, uh, with progenesis, the computing power required is uh, very high. And so you can limit yourself if you don't have a powerful computer. My laptop weighs 25 pounds, and RAM is your, uh, your best friend when it comes to progenesis and these huge data sets. We've actually gone up to 30 uh, gigs of RAM at one shot. Uh, when we were doing a recombination of fractions as uh, part of progenesis. And that was for actually a human liver project. So being at Mayo, uh, we, we run into a lot of great MDs, and we had a, an MD come up to us. He says, I have 18 people that I have managed to take liver biopsies from. And two of them are lean controls. Seven of them, seven of them are uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients, and eight of them are non-alcoholic uh, steohepatitis people. And so we ended up doing, I think, uh, somewhere around 160 fractions uh, for that group of uh, 18, 17 people. That actually yielded some really interesting results. The goal there was to try to discover a less invasive mechanism than liver biopsies to try to diagnose what stage liver disease you're at. And what we discovered were there, there were big differences in protein expression levels of uh, metabolic proteins in the caffeine pathway. And so that paper is currently uh, just about to be submitted. We're waiting on some subject characteristics uh, tables, and hopefully we'll get that out pretty soon. But that was, that was a fantastic project. That was a beast. I um, actually had to run a lot of them over again because the source was uh, quitting. The voltage on the source kept dropping out, but that's a different story. Uh, the larynx, so this, this other, this other uh, researcher at, at Mayo, he's a surgeon and he works on an idea. He wants to regenerate um, the voice box. And so he goes and he deals with people that have been in accidents he goes and harvests the seven tissues of the larynx, and he brings those seven tissue biopsies in, and they harvested the, the extracellular matrix proteins from three people to try to diagnose, uh, to try to quantitatively uh, profile 
the differences in those seven tissues to try to figure out how to regenerate those tissues in a uh, vitro model. And that paper is actually also uh, in, in, uh, in their, their, their manuscript preparation. It's a beast. That one was also right around 120 fractions as well. So these are big projects, and progenesis rips right through it. Um, in addition, we've, uh, we've also had some fantastic luck with uh, different depots like uh, fat SBF versus, uh, versus adipocyte cells. So it's, it's good stuff, but um, I'm going to get to you a little bit more about um, what progenesis helped me do as far as getting my LC set up when I was making the transition to the elite. And so this was back in the day um, before we had the HeLa Digest. And so uh, the HeLa Digest was fantastic because it was a benchmark digest that we could use across all users to try to make sure that your machine is working uh, fantastically. So back in the day, we, we, you know, whatever that was four or five years ago, um, I was, it was like, well, I'm going to take just whatever I had and run it. And then eventually uh, Caltech came up with the yeast gold standard. And so I quickly tried to get some of this yeast gold standard, and I threw it on my machine. And this was basically uh, a typical total ion chromatogram on my, the LC setup that Thermo had provided me. And so immediately I was like, well, that doesn't look too great. But the advantage of progenesis was is it allowed me to see my run now in 2D, which was a whole new world for me. And so I believe what we have is, is we have mass, mass to charge over time. And so now I could see, OK, yeah, I'm, I'm looking good. And then all of a sudden, right where you see this big blur, I'm like, well, what is that? And then next thing you know, you can see basically what I've got is, is I've got all this stuff coming out at the end. And sure enough, it's because I had a very poor gradient set up initially. And so this opened up a whole new world to me because back in the day, I was using a splitter system. And you know when it didn't work, it's like, well, we'll just change solvents A and B and, and move forward. But now we had this, this, uh, this 2D map, and we were able to quickly move forward. And so I said, OK, well, I'm going to fix my gradient. And then so uh, Dionics, which I have a, I have a, I have an easy, I mean, I'm sorry, a, it's like a RS3000 uh, nano LC on the front of my, uh, my Elite. And so I'm looking at this, and, and Anjum, uh, my, uh, my engineer guy, he goes, well, you know, that doesn't look like very good uh, chromatography. He said, you know, you could easily start to notice you have very broad peaks, not very sharp, um, uh, sharp peaks at all. And when we put it in 2D, sure enough, you can see that basically your, all your, your, your peaks are just blobs. And so this led to me to get very angry because I had a trap column on. And Dionics at the time said, you cannot use anything but this trap. And I said, I don't want to use a trap. Because every time I use a trap, my chromatography looks like trash. And they said, well, no, you got to use a trap. I said, I want to go direct inject, OK? And they said, no, no, because the trap, you can desalt online. I said, I don't want to desalt online. I'm going to desalt offline. And so sure enough, when we got rid of the trap and we put on an actual real column with excellent 2 micron C18 matrix, sure enough, it really focused all of our data very tightly. And next thing you know, we start getting gorgeous 2D maps. And our percent ID rates go through the roof. So I talked to the guys at Thermo. I said, well, well you know, what, what's a good ID rate on a, on a HeLa Digest? They said, well, you know, we like 40% on the elite. And I'm getting like 50% at this point. So I'm living a fantasy land now simply with the progenesis QC. I haven't even gotten to the data yet, you know? And so now you guys can see this is a typical ion chromatogram uh, that we get with these gorgeous sharp peaks. What I've done is, is I've switched absolutely no trap. I fully recommend no trap if you desalt offline. And then I, I like a 50 centimeter uh, column 
a, like a two micron C18 matrix, and this is actually, this is human mitochondria, uh, 20 uh, micrograms of uh, purifying human mito with an in-solution triptych digest. And now, and now you can see this gorgeous 2D map where everything is a fine pinprick, and you can quickly see how to work your gradient to try to maximize your yield and get the best depth of coverage. And so, you know, and a nice, real nice feature is we can also see the, the uh, total amount of uh, MSMS counts. So that's just one really nice feature of Progenesis, and I'm about to jump onto a new machine. Um, I hope I am, and if I do, I cannot wait to fire up Progenesis and uh, get the Gila Digest ripping and just see how far I can go into this new frontier that's already happened in whatever, the five years since uh, the Elite came out. So here's, a, here's another really good, oh, did it, did it become frozen? Mark? Yeah. Sir? Do the thing you did. Come here. Okay. So another great uh, feature is also you can um, actually do um, your, you can find out your, your peak, uh, your mass, I'm sorry, your charge states. And so what I was noticing back in the day that I had way too many plus one charge states, and it, my, my whole uh, run was overwhelmed by plus one charge states. But now what Progenesis allows you to do is it allows you to see in your 2D map where your charge states are. So those are your plus ones. You actually have a numerical value. This one says 3,000 something, and there's all my plus twos at, at whatever, uh, 18, 16, 17,000, and then your plus threes. So this is also fantastic when you're doing QC as well. So um, you can use Progenesis, and I've, I've had fantastic results on, uh, with my own work, my insulin action work, on analyzing individual protein phosphorylation and interactome studies. You can do it all. Um, in addition, you can do that from uh, disease states as well. So last part of the talk uh, is actually uh, quantifying post-translational modifications by Progenesis. Um, each each, uh, each uh, peptide gives you a automated extracted ion abundance value that you can use to actually quantify the abundance of your post-translational modification. And so it's excellent for assessing directional fold changes of phosphorylation. So for me, I'll do basal versus insulin stimulated. And what I'll do is, is I'll take um, six non-modified non peptides. These are my peptide standards. And I'll get their extracted ion abundance values and I'll sum them together to get the amount of my protein in the sample, and I'll normalize the uh, extracted ion abundance value of my phosphorylation peptide, my phosphorylated peptide. And what I can do is I can do then a fold change of the effect of my uh, treatment. And so here's an example. When I load one microliter of a purified amount of uh, CLASP2 protein digest, here is the extracted uh, ion abundance value and I did it three times, here's my average. I load two microliters, I did it three times. I get a doubling. I load four microliters, I get another doubling. This is, a, this, is, this is all automated, you know? And then what I'll do is, is I'll get a, a, a phosphorylation site of interest. I have my basal amount, and then I have in my insulin stimulated amount. You can see I've got a five-fold change in the phosphorylation of this peptide. I treat with an inhibitor, it's suppressed, and then I treat with a second inhibitor, I get a 100-fold increase in the amount of phosphorylation. This is a fantasy. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm all into it. And so I've done this for uh, my, my protein across the board. And you can see some, some sites are suppressed, and a couple other sites are, are insulin stimulating. So we're going into the biology of this. So that, that pretty much concludes my little uh, blurb on uh, progenesis. It's been uh, fantastic for me as far as getting my machine uh, running tip-top uh, the best I can to get as, as much data as I possibly can. Um, it has been fantastic uh, for large, very complex, um, uh, label-free uh, 
uh, data sets. Uh, I've had no problems pounding through big, big, uh, big sets of data for us anyway in the human world. And of course, I've had uh, excellent success with it uh, in the world of uh, post-translational modification. Uh, so that's it. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much, Paul. Uh, time for one question, perhaps? Or can, yeah. Yeah, sure. To let uh, the program to read it. Yeah, I use, I use, uh, I use my uh, raw files straight from my machine. So in Thermo, we're going to get a raw file. And I'm going to input it directly into Progenesis. And then Progenesis is going to pump out an MGF file. OK? And then the MGF file then goes into um, Mascot. And I think Mascot then pumps out a XML. XML. And then XML goes right into it. It's just push the buttons and go. Yeah. Great. Thanks again, Paul. OK, thanks, everybody.